And this is Thomas Campion's poem, There is a Garden in Her Face. There is a garden in her face where roses and white lilies grow. A heavenly paradise is that place wherein all pleasant fruits do flow. There cherries grow, which none may buy, till cherry ripe themselves do cry. Those cherries fairly do enclose a Orient pearl, a double row, which when her lovely laughter shows, they look like rose buds filled with snow. Yet them nor peer nor prince can buy, till cherry ripe themselves do cry. Her eyes like angels watch them still, her brows like bended bows do stand, threatening with piercing frowns to kill all that attempt with eye or hand those sacred cherries to come nigh, till cherry ripe themselves do cry. Two songs by John Milton, and then Robert Herrick's Sweet Disorder. The winter being over, in order comes the spring, which doth green herbs discover, and cause the birds to sing. The night also expired, then comes the morning bright, which is so much desired by all that love the light. This may learn them that mourn to put their grief to flight. The spring succeedeth winter, and day must follow. On May morning, now the bright morning star, day's harbinger, comes dancing from the east and leads with her the flowery May, who from her green lap throws the yellow cowslip and the pale primrose. Hail, bounteous May, that dost inspire mirth and youth and warm desire. Woods and groves are on thy dressing, hill and dale doth boast thy blessing. Thus we salute thee with our early song, and welcome thee, and wish thee long. A sweet disorder in the dress kindles and clothes a wantonness, a lawn about the shoulders thrown into a fine distraction, an erring lace which here and there enthralls the crisp crimson stomacher, a cuff neglectful and thereby ribbons to flow confusedly. A winning wave, a deserving note, in the tempestuous petticoat, a careless shoestring, in whose tie I see a wild civility, do more bewitch me than when art is too precise in every part. So that's the first Sidney's Loving and Truth, followed by Shakespeare in Sonnet 18. <laughs> Loving and Truth. And fain in verse my love to show, that she, dear she, might take some pleasure in of my pain. Pleasure might cause her read, reading might make her know. Knowledge might pity win, and pity grace obtain. I sought fit words to paint the blackest face of woe, studying inventions fine her wits to entertain, oft turning others these to see if thence would flow some fresh and fruitful showers upon my sunburned brain. But words came halting forth, wanting invention stay. Invention, nature's child, fled step dame studies blows, and others' feet still seemed but strangers in my way. Thus, great with child to speak, and helpless in my throes, biting my truant pen, beating myself for spite. Fool! said my muse to me, look in thy heart and write. Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Thou art more lovely and more temperate. Rough winds do shake the darling buds of May, and summer's peace hath all too sure to date. Sometime too hot the eye of heaven shines, and oft is its gold complexion dimmed. And every fair from fair sometime declines by chance, or nature's changing course untrimmed. But thy eternal summer shall not fade, nor lose possession of that fair thou owest, 
nor shall death cry thou wanderest in his shade, when in eternal lines to time thou growest. So long as men can breathe, or eyes can see, so long as this, this gives life to thee.